Thanks to our title sponsor, Juniper Networks, for helping make Research Saturday possible. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CyberWire's Research Saturday. I'm Dave Bittner, and this is our weekly conversation with researchers and analysts tracking down the threats and vulnerabilities, solving some of the hard problems of protecting ourselves in a rapidly evolving cyberspace. Thanks for joining us. Crytox ransomware has been um, around since uh, at least 2020, uh, but uh, it hasn't been in the news. We haven't seen anything major um, back then. That's Deepin Desai from Zscaler. Today we're talking about his team's research on the Crytox ransomware family. In September 2021, the team actually noticed uh, a company, uh, you know, uh, named RTL. It's a Netherlands-based company that was hit, and it was publicly acknowledged as well. Um, although one of the things that the team noticed back then was uh, the ransom amount was 8,500 euros. And that's hmm. that's very very small compared to uh, the ransom demands that we see with uh, some of the other ransomware gangs like uh, Conti and you know Hive and others. So we've been tracking the payloads. We've been tracking the uh, developments on on the on the campaign side as well. And uh, one of the things that the team noticed over here was, uh, unlike many of the other ransomware groups. Crytox ransomware does not perform double extortion attacks. It just performs data encryption and, uh, you know, uh, holds it for ransom. It does not perform data exfiltration from the impacted machine. Going a little old school with the ransomware, right? Exactly. It is, it is one of the old school ways of doing things. There are a couple other things we noticed. I mean, they they did uh, make it easier for the victims to communicate back with the threat actor. So they were dropping this, uh, uh, you know, peer-to-peer -peer instant messenger app called Tox um, on the infected machine. Uh, and uh, you just click on it and you're basically um, able to communicate and negotiate the ransom amount with the threat actor. Can you walk us through what's going on technically behind the scenes here? Is there any interesting aspects to that part of it? Yeah, in terms of uh, the encryption, I mean, there's there's nothing um, uh, that uh, that is different than what we have seen before. I mean, it's you it's using AES CBC uh, with Perfile two fifty six bit key um, that is protected with the locally generated RSA public key. And he uses this to encrypt local disks, network drives, and um, you know at all of those locations you will see a ransom note uh, with a five-day timer. Um, um, you know that's basically notifying the victim that your files have been encrypted, pay, or you will lose all the data. And so you still have the ability to pay on that machine. I mean, they don't completely disable it. You can communicate with them. Yeah, you're you're basically using the messenger application uh, to communicate, and then they will provide the link for performing the payment. Is there any sense that uh, if you follow through with them and you pay the ransom, you'll get your files back? Um, for for most ransomware groups, uh, we do observe that you do get a key back, uh, right, which will allow you to decrypt your files. Uh, so while we didn't go that route to confirm it, at least for the for the publicly known case, uh, they did uh, get the key and were able to restore their file. Juniper Connected Security helps organizations build threat-aware networks that extend security to every point of connection across the network. To learn more, visit juniper.net slash security or connect with Juniper on Twitter or Facebook. That's juniper.net slash security. And now a word from our sponsor, Datadome. 50% of online traffic is made up of bots. Cyber criminals use bots to steal digital businesses' content, user accounts, and even their inventory. 
Data Domes bought an online fraud protection solution, detects and mitigates attacks with unparalleled accuracy and zero compromise. Datadome defends mobile apps, websites, and APIs against ATO, scraping, carding, DDoS, and more. The machine learning solution analyzes 3 trillion signals per day to adapt to new threats in real time. Combined with 24-7 SOC experts, it protects hundreds of brands worldwide, including Reddit, Patreon, and AngelList. Datadome is fully transparent, easy to deploy, and frictionless for consumers. In 2022, Datadome was named a strong performer in the Forrester Wave bot management and ranked the top G2 leader in bot detection and mitigation for fall 2022. Visit datadome.co slash cyberwire to start your free 30-day trial. Get fully set up in under an hour. That's datadome.co slash cyberwire. It's interesting that the the ransom demand is so low, and uh, you know, I wonder if they're comparatively trying to fly under the radar compared to some of the the bigger players here. Yeah, that 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 does uh, sort of uh, raise his eyebrow. Like, why so low? Uh, maybe they're trying to do uh, um, more development and more testing, and and then, yeah, as you pointed out staying under the radar so that uh, there's no law enforcement action as well, given so much uh, focus on the ransomware uh, threat actors these days. Uh, we also noticed, uh, actually, while the team was analyzing some of the payloads, that uh, the encryption mechanism that they have used, it's actually prone to some weaknesses uh, that could actually allow some brute forcing methods um, you know, that can result in us decrypting the files as well. So definitely not one of those, uh, you know, uh, sophisticated ransomware payloads. It's, it, it still p- probably appears to be a work in progress. And is the group trying to prevent analysis from researchers like yourself? Do they have elements of that in there? They, they did have some basic anti-debug, uh, anti-analysis technique, but nothing to write home about. <laughs> okay, nothing sophisticated. I mean, is that is that pretty much what you're seeing here with this group that uh, we wouldn't rate their sophistication as being particularly high? And that is accurate. Yes. Yeah. And so, in terms of folks best protecting themselves against this specific group, what are your recommendations? Yeah. So I think the 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 guidance should guidance over here is to look at the ransomware problem holistically. Um, every time I speak to um, you know some of the large organization security leaders, um, I always ask them to look at the problem in four buckets. What are you doing to reduce your external attack surface? Because when these gangs go after you, they will first try to find out what all things are exposed. Uh, They may come through one of the users uh, falling for a phishing attack. They may come uh, after you through an asset that is exposed to the internet. Uh, it could be a server, it could be a workload, it could be your 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 system sitting in the corporate environment. Uh, it could be VPN, as I'm um, as we have seen before. Uh, but so look at what you can do to reduce that external attack surface. Second is provide consistent security uh, on all internet bound traffic uh, with full SL inspection, and that's where a proxy based architecture really helps out. The goal over there is to prevent that initial infection. The third bucket is what can you do to prevent that lateral propagation phase? That's where majority of these ransomware gangs does a lot of damage. Right? Having one system going down with a ransomware attack versus the entire environment going down is, is the difference between it being a small incident to a org scale breach. So over there, user-to-app segmentation, app-to-app micro-segmentation plays a very important role in containing this incident to a single host versus entire environment. And then finally, um, in this case, Crytox is not exfilling data, but uh, more than 50% of the ransomware threat actors that were tracking perform data exfiltration as well. So you need to have consistent data loss prevention strategy for all your internet-bound traffic, right? Uh, and that's where, again, SSL inspection plays a very important role because these guys are just using 
public cloud, uh, you know, SaaS locations to even exfil your data from the infected machines. Yeah, it's really interesting to see uh, as the ransomware, uh, I don't know, ecosystem continues to evolve that we have players coming in and running at all different levels. You know, I think it's it's perhaps easy to say that these folks are kind of at the entry level, you know, not terribly sophisticated, not asking for a lot of money, uh, trying to go unnoticed. And then you have that all the way up to the big players and, and everything in between. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a gamut. Uh, it's a it's a pyramid model where there's like uh, you know highly sophisticated gangs at the top and then there's like uh, dozens and dozens of these uh, new kids on the block or or more um, work in progress kind of ransomware gangs yeah all right well deep into Sai, thanks for joining us Our thanks to Deepin Desai from Zscaler for joining us. The research is on the Crytox ransomware family. We'll have a link in the show notes. Thanks to Juniper Networks for sponsoring our show. You can learn more at juniper.net slash security or connect with them on Twitter or Facebook. Hey everybody, Dave here. We love what we do here at the CyberWire and are proud to be able to provide news and insights that top leaders and decision makers rely on every day. We'd like to give a huge thanks to our many sponsors that make all of this possible and invite your company to join them in reaching over quarter million unique listeners and 50,000 readers each week. Find out about opportunities to bring your brand and messages to the most influential audience in cybersecurity. Visit the cyberwire.com slash sponsorship and join in on the action. The Cyberwire podcast is proudly produced in Maryland out of the startup studios of Data Tribe, where they're co-building the next generation of cybersecurity teams and technologies. Our amazing Cyberwire team is Rachel Gelfin, Liz Irvin, Elliot Peltzman, Trey Hester, Brandon Karp. Eliana White, Peru Prakash, Justin Sabi, Tim Nodar, Joe Kerrigan, Carol Terrio, Ben Yellen, Nick Vilecki, Gina Johnson, Bennett Moe, Chris Russell, John Petrick, Jennifer Iben, Rick Howard, Peter Kilpie, and I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening. We'll see you back here next week. <laughs> <laughs>